Hello, and welcome to another episode of Perfect Pairings. My name is Gayan, she, her. And my name's Nicole, and my pronouns are she and her. And we'd like to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. We also want to acknowledge the often fraught relationship between Indigenous land rights and the Australian farming industry, and acknowledge the huge contribution that Indigenous people have made to the fibre arts industry over the millennia. So friends, today we are doing a whips episode. Um, we have been very busy, Gosh, um, yes. clacky clacking our needles. <laughs> Um, but maybe we should just talk quickly about what we are wearing. Yes, in our last Whips episode, Gayanne was wearing a very beautiful shawl and we neglected to mention it and have had quite a few comments um, asking what it is. So thank you for those who comment. We love, we love your work. Um, and thanks for pointing that out that we need to talk about what we're wearing. Mm -hmm. So first of all, this is the Honey Moss Shawl by Andrea Mowry of Dre Renee Knits. And I've knit it in Great Ocean Road Labella Templar. And if you watch our last episode, um, then it's featured there in all its glory. Mm -hmm. I am wearing a quirky little project. Um, it's kind of a, I'll do a little hover. It's a little kind of just fluffy, chunky cardigan. Um, it is uh, a project that I made quite a long time ago. It was actually like maybe my third or fourth knitting project. So I just finished the shawlography and it was the day before Christmas and I decided I needed to go to Maker Maker and buy myself some yarn to cast on something over the Christmas break. Of course, um, cast on. <laughs> so I had um, become obsessed by this bright yellow um, fluff. So this is from the mohair and possum store in New Zealand. And a friend of mine had made something for another friend, a mutual friend on Instagram, uh, and I was obsessed by it. So I bought kind of just a chunk. I didn't even really have any clue about sweater quantities at that stage. That is such a delightful color. And it's very chunky mohair. And it's really, really soft. Mm -hmm. I hadn't expected that from mm. the mohair. Maybe that's the possum blend. Uh, I don't know whether that actually oh, has possum, possum in, it? in it or whether it's just from the mohair and possum store. No, it's 94% kid mohair and 6% nylon. So oh. it's from the mohair and possum store, but it's just their brand of mohair. Anyway, I ducked into Maker Maker um, because I wanted um, something. It was the original pattern is um, by Marinda Herms and um, she designs under MYPZ is her, is her um, brand name. We'll link to it in the comments. And this is her chunky beginner cardigan, um, which is exactly what I needed at the time. Just a lovely, easy modular construction. I made it a little bit less kind of puffy and um, oversized um, and I didn't swatch and I didn't use the needle size that the pattern did. Um, I just made the smaller size using smaller needles and thought that it would be less chunky in the end. And it worked. Lucky, um, <laughs> probably. <laughs> there was a lot of little mods there. Um, but it is a pattern that um, does have quite inclusive sizing. So there's really only three sizes and they're all designed to be um, quite oversized. So um, but I held the yarn together. So I think the original has two strands of like a really chunky mohair held together. Um, but I grabbed a beautiful, just buttery, creamy skein of Melbourne City Dye Works. Um, Pauline is a bit of a local legend in Melbourne oh, um, and it's been going for many years. I reckon it was probably one of the, like, you know, as we started to really get into beautiful hand dyed yarn, mm -hmm. um, Melbourne City mm -hmm. Dye Works was one of the early, um, early legends. So, um, and she um, is one of the people that is behind the She's Crafty Markets, which Gayanne keeps going to and I keep having to work during. So anyway, that's what I'm wearing. That was quite a long spiel. Um, but let's get on to the purpose of today. Yes. Let's talk about some whips. Yes, and the one this 
first one that we're talking about, I'm so excited to share with you. I have cast on the Sarian sweater by Kadri. Um, this is a size inclusive pattern and it is just an absolutely beautiful roll neck. Um, we'll hold it up like that. Um, I am knitting this with um, Alpaca Allure by Fiber Naturally. Um, you've um, perhaps seen our previous episode with Gail Herring. Um, and we've got we'll this... link to it in the show notes. Um, we actually have twinning skeins of this yarn, mm -hmm. um, which is a... It's alpaca merino and recycled sari silk. So there's um, flecks of colors it's not... um, and these beautiful pinks, um, pinks and a little bit of orange. It's just gorgeous. And the yarn is so soft. Um, and I picked this pattern because the original pattern was made with a cashmere yarn and I reckon this has a similar feel and drape um, as cashmere. Um, I haven't made any modifications, but I did swatch and my gauge was it, like quite a few stitches bigger than what is called for in the pattern. So I was able to do some math and figure out that I just needed to cast on the number of stitches for the extra small. Um, normally I wear a medium, which is usually a size three in most patterns, um, but I've done the extra small and it fits beautifully. I am so excited. I did the, um, there was an option to use a smaller needle for the neck so you get a bit of a closer turtleneck and clearly you can see I like wearing things around, <laughs> around my <laughs> neck. Um, so I hope to finish this um, for Bendigo so I can show Gail. It's probably the next time that I'm going to see her. I really want her to see how beautifully this knits up and the yarn is just a dream to work with. And when we say Bendigo, we're talking about the Australian Sheep and Wool Show, um, which is coming up and we're very excited. I know, excited. I'm so excited. It's my like Christmas, legit. Yeah, yeah. It's, for people in the US, it's kind of, it's as close to Rhinebeck as we get here. Mm, mm. Yeah. All right. All right, what's next? What is next? Um, I think you were knitting ah, with some fiber naturally as well. I was. I was. All right. So this is a whip that I've shown before. Um, it's a big whip though. So you'll probably see it at least another time as a whip before it turns up as an FO. Look, I think it's fine that we show progress and we can only knit so many it's things, true. right? And I've been working on that half and half wrap for about <laughs> six months now. I'm sure that will come back about eight times before. <laughs> this is, and I probably don't have it on quite a long enough needle, but the beautiful Cinnabar Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And I'm probably halfway, maybe, okay. maybe. Look yeah. at this color change. Um, so this is using gorgeous um, fiber naturally, 100% alpaca mm -hmm. um, from a single animal. Her name Regan. is Regan. Um, so 100% Regan alpaca. Um, she's a really deep brown color. Mm -hmm. And then the beautiful um, gradient yarn is uh, Sorbetcha from the Yarn Therapist. Um, and it was a gift from my lovely um, wool swap buddy, Carrie. Um, and we've talked about that in earlier episodes as well. So coming along beautifully, really enjoying the pattern. Um, no particular mods on this one. Um, I am just um, doing a um, slip one with yarn in front on the edge just to give it a slightly um, more... Not so I don't kind of get the really garter bumps on the edge, but um, gorgeous pattern. I was hoping to finish it in time for the end of the Drea or Renee Knits March to May Cal. Uh, I think that we are filming um, still in May. This will go mm -hmm. live probably a little after May. I, I think it's not going to happen for me. Never mind. Uh, it was great reason to cast on. Mm -hmm. So. We always um. love a good cast on. <laughs> or a reason to cast on. Do we need a reason to cast on? I don't think so. What are we going to talk about next? Yes, this Maza. <laughs> Clearly a pattern here with me and super voluminous <laughs> shawls. 
This is my High Earth Shawl by Claire Walls. It was a pattern originally in the 52 Weeks of Shawls book. Um, I am knitting this in Tarndy. It's 100% Polworth, their natural eight ply in the colorway top, taupe, taupe. I would say top. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I got it right the first time. <laughs> um, it is absolutely, oh. they actually cut. Oh, yeah. Oh. This is it's bigger huge. than anything right? you've done before. <laughs> um, Let's just try and get okay. a scale no on this. Way. Ready? Ready? Elevator. It keeps. Oh, 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 oh. Are we at the end? No. No. Keep going. There we go. <laughs> Interactive television here, um, people. <laughs> so it's got this beautiful garter. Um, garter section and then this little bit of lace section on the end and the one thing I really liked about this pattern is that you start by casting on the stitches of the long end and then every other row you cast off so it just gradually gets shorter and shorter however I we've discussed this this is another whip that we've perhaps seen before um, but I lost at yarn chicken and thankfully um, at the Coburg yarn market I was able to get another skein um, from Tarndy and I also want to shout out to Tarndy a thank you for the um, saving me in my knit emergency um, she ran a, she she lost a yarn chicken twice <laughs> so we bought a skein at Coburg um, to finish mm -hmm. and then I there was a particular yarn that I wanted from Coburg that they didn't have at the time um, they just hadn't brought it and so they very kindly posted it out to me and just before the package was about to be sent we I sent an email going we have an emergency <laughs> because I realized I would run out again so thank you Tandy thank you so much for saving the day <laughs> um and then I'm also hoping to finish this it's not a not a um um deadline or anything but I'd like to have it done for um, Bendigo as well so I ah. like to just show the producers what yep. I've made with their yarn I think it's really nice it so they nice can idea. see yep. um, mods I'm just doing again this slip one with yarn in front on the edge the skirter edge um, I've realized that when you do that you have to I know it's beautiful it's very <laughs> very nice this um, is pole work ah. <laughs> you just have to be careful not to go too tight like yeah. too tight once when you flip it around and yeah. And knit that slipped stitch um but otherwise this is a really enjoyable knit and the um i'm enjoying that like the small sections of lace so a little bit of concentration with the other um garter um garter part which is just beautiful relaxing knitting excellent all right so my next one um i have been working on this for quite some time also this is my progress where do we go here on the javelin um, sweater which is by Teti Lutzak um, a lovely Ukrainian um, designer this I think in the blurb um, she was designing it around the time that the war in the Ukraine started so mm. um, yeah uh, um, and I think javelin, she calls it the javelin um, as a, there's something in the blurb about it being a mark of strength or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I have just separated four sleeves and am starting on the, um, the body. Um, it's such I, an exciting part. It is the... an exciting part. <laughs> so um, I didn't swatch <clears throat> because I don't swatch. Um, and it probably wasn't my best life choice in this time. Um, because... I'm not going to say I told you so, but... Because when I got to the end of the yoke, it said, um, you know, do three more rows and then separate for the sleeve. And I was like, mm, no, that's not going to work for me. I'm going to need to need, I'm going to need more yoke before I, or more depth there before I separate for the sleeve. But it's fine. I fixed it. Mm -hmm. I did some more 
some more rows and all good and no dramas and I've tried it on and it fits and looks we're all great. going well and it it's beautiful great. and guess what I'm helical knitting oh that's exciting so, um, but because of the variegation yeah the because color. of the variegation mm -hmm. so helical knitting um, basically it's a it's a way of using um, two skeins so that if particularly with hand dyed variegated yarn mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you can get differences between the skeins um, so it's basically if you think of the two skeins kind of coiling together um, that was a great description now knitting in the hand <laughs> is like knitting a coil because you never actually have a complete circle so um, but it's a, a neater way of changing it rather than getting to the end of the row and then picking up the other one um, really cool knitting um, means that you don't sort of just have this one line of stitches which is the mm -hmm. change stitch it, mm -hmm. it moves where the changeover of the yarn is so mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you an off an off, um, off the cuff question yeah did you watch any particular videos about helical knitting that I, you were thought were very helpful I did I found grace the babbler Love she's that. fantastic she's irish I, I i think she might be my new podcast discovery she's oh. prolific she does a lot of knitting coaching kind of stuff and then a, a, a lot more general podcast i haven't had time to watch a lot oh. of her stuff i'm We're a bit fascinated list. with ireland though so mm -hmm. um but i don't know how i found her um one particularly but i'm glad i did because mm -hmm. it, it's um it's one of the it's it's a nice video and it's a really good clear um description mm -hmm. of helical knitting um your fascination with ireland doesn't stop at um grace the babbler either does it no the yarn is mm -hmm. life in the long grass um which i think comes from cork in ireland um and it is called autumn leaves the colorway it's, it's just beautiful beautiful dk um i think it's 100 percent merino um, anyway, we'll describe it in the in the comments. But um, mm -hmm. yes, going very well. Absolutely loving this pattern, um, and it's roughly a size two. But like, really, who knows? It's something. <laughs> it fits. It fits. It's, it's That's all, all that matters. matters. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> the next um project is actually quite near and dear to my heart um this i'm making a boneyard shawl it's a pattern by stephen west it's actually a free pattern and it's a beautiful um quite basic um shawl pattern it's knit top down um and i think it would be a wonderful first shawl um that you could make here it is i'm not made any modifications i'm doing the um make one left make one right increases along the center the center line here um and it just i think shows off this yarn beautifully this yarn is um it's actually 100 percent english lister long wool that um well i didn't make it but i coordinated the manufacture of it so it's really special yarn called calling wool and it is yarn from the fleece of the sheep at the Collingwood children's farm and um i um i have a grant from the city of yarra to produce yarn from the fleece of those sheep and it's been such a wonderful project um part of it is producing the wool um and part of it is organizing craft workshops at the farm so that's something that's been bringing me an incredible amount of joy this project for the last few years um, and to see it knit up into something so beautiful was really 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 special and to work with it and to know that i've um produced this yarn from basically combing out all of the vegetable matter from this <laughs> fleece who have hair like mine like these curls but they're much more organic <laughs> and um matted because they're sheep and they live outside and they don't you know wash yeah. their hair regularly and so i should add that this yarn is not commercially available it's um, not it is um it is the grant is in association with a community group um called the cwa which 
stands for the Country Women's Association. We do not live in the country, we so don't. there are city branches of this now. Mm -hmm. um, but the Collingwood CWA, um, so the, it, the grant is for them to um, uh, make the yarn. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, any proceeds of anything to do with the yarn, it all goes to charity, which mm -hmm. is amazing as and well. back into the city of yep. Yarra itself. Yep. And, um, yeah, so local um, women's shelters and um, uh, Indigenous support groups and those kinds of really wonderful community projects. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I also have something that I am working on um, with Collingwall. Mm -hmm. um, my Collingwall is... Uh, later development compared to yours. So yep. Gayans was 100% English Leicester. Um, the majority of the Collingwall is a blend of Shropshire, which is quite a rustic kind of um, wool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with that English Leicester. Um, so it has a lot more rustic kind of texture to it. But it maintains the luster, I think, of um, some of the Leicester. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm really excited about this because this is my first test knit. So um, if you have watched our interview with Susanna Cartman, um, and we'll link to it in the show notes, uh, she is a local designer um, that we have become beautiful friends with. Mm -hmm. um, so ah, Susanna, <laughs> looking forward to seeing you soon. Um, and so I joined her test knit group. I've never really considered doing a test knit before, but mm -hmm. I felt like Susanna might be the person that I do a test mm -hmm. knit for. Mm -hmm. So um, Susanna has this lovely pattern um, and I'm not far from finishing it um, called the Claire in Paris shawl. Um, she will be releasing that on Ravelry in a few months once the test knit has finished and mm -hmm. she has given permission for us to talk about it, which is very lovely of her. Um, so this is based on, if you've watched the series Outlander, um, the kind of the shape of the shawl is based on the early season of Outlander um, when Claire was in Scotland and it was all pretty rustic. And so that's part of the reason um, I decided to play around with a more rustic yarn for it. And then um, kind of the colours and some of the design features are based on later episode, or sorry, later season of Outlander, which I think might be season three um, when Claire is in Paris. So there's a couple of versions. Um, I'm making the version called the Dior version, um, which just has two colours. Um, there's another version called the Versailles version that has mm -hmm. three colours. Mm -hmm. um, they look roughly the same. But um, this is, and when I pitched um, for the test knit, I really wanted to play with this rustic yarn. So I got permission to try the test knit doing a, so the shawl is actually written for four ply or um, fingering weight. Um, my version is DK because that is what we have for calling wool. So it's going to be big. Um, look, it's beautiful. But it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'll just show the bottom it's kind of this like garter edge um there the yarn looks quite black i think in the screen at mm, the moment it's mm. actually a really deep forest green that i hand dyed myself um and there's only a little bit to go um so i'm gonna add well not i'm gonna add the pattern has <laughs> um <laughs> some extra stripes um so some long way stripes so i think it's a a a white, a creamy stockingette, um, and then another garter um, in the green, and a creamy stockingette, and a garter in the green. Can't remember how many stripes it has. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. no modifications because it's a test knit. Um, my particular version will also have a bobble bind off, which um, is apparently going to take me a long time, so I better keep <laughs> plugging away on the test knit. Um, but it's such a beautiful pattern, um, a really good. Um, Probably um, not beginner beginner, mm -hmm. but um, but in the realm of um, adventurous, quite an, quite adventurous an, beginner. Yeah, quite an, look, quite an easy knit. Nothing particularly challenging about it. 
Um, and one of the other things I really enjoyed about doing this is mm -hmm. Susanna created a Facebook group for all the test knitters. Um, so there's been this lovely community of, I think there's about 16 or 18 test knitters um, that are all really lovely and really um, engaging and really kind to each other, um, really supportive. Um, and one of them, um, Daniela, um, from a knitter's suitcase who uh, that's the name of her podcast and okay. all her, also her Instagram account that's right um, we've really bonded with and um, she's decided to fly out to Melbourne for um, the Bendigo um, sheep and wool show so can't wait can't we're wait. gonna be able to hang out with her there and we'll definitely take some footage on the day so and you should definitely check out her episode where she talks about her version of the mm. Claire and Paris shawl because it's um, equally beautiful but completely different. Yes. And I, so she is making the Versailles version with the three colours. Um, yeah. And it just goes to show the versatility yeah. and the um, creativity that you can express through this pattern. And I yeah. think that's one of the things that makes a pattern great. So, yay. Um, just really really fun and so lovely to work with Susanna on something like this as well which has been a real joy so mm. um I'm just gonna put it out there if you are interested in perhaps acquiring some calling wool you can perhaps d dm us on instagram um and let us know we might be yep. able to um yeah, oh, as 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 part of mm. as part of the it's a yeah, charity fundraising yeah. for community. Yeah, yeah, and and there is um it's a number of colours available as well, which may or may not be hand dyed by me in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's up next? Ah, oh, this whip. Oh. <laughs> because we're coming up to, um, because we're coming up to Bendigo, I was laying. Oops laying in bed one night, tossing and turning because I was like, oh, I have all this yarn and the show's coming up and I have yarn that I bought at the show that I haven't knit yet. And I thought, I've just got to do it. So I have cast on, it's still in its infant stages, the Rain or Shine Shawl by Stephen West. And here it is. Um, I am utilize, utilize the first few sections to actually kind of play around with the color order that I will ultimately use. Um, but the yarn is Cola Girl Collective Myrtle Lace and the colorway is um, uh, Love Note. It's the light pink. Um, the gray is called Sephiroth. Um, the gray then there's... It's a beautiful silvery gray. Actually, it's showing up quite well in the... Is it? Yep. Beautiful. Um, this one is called Piping Strike, so it's a very similar gray, but there's some black speckles going through that. And then this one, which I love. We all know how much I love burgundy mohair. <laughs> um, sorry, you can check back the previous episode. I think there's I... more burgundy mohair there for you. <laughs> um, this one is called Scarlet Letter. And then the last color is blackity black. Um, so the shawl is actually fairly simple. It's mostly garter stitch, but there's a slip stitch. You can actually see it quite well in that stripe there. Um, and it's just a pattern repeat. Um, it's really lovely and it is so buttery soft and fluffy and... And so do you hold two strands together yeah. The all the time. time so it's sort of a mild it is effect. mild it is yep. a mild effect um yeah and i just kind of experimented with the how i wanted the colors to be but i think i've worked out now what i like yep. so Wonderful. it's the most freewheeling i've been in <laughs> i'm so <laughs> proud of you i know i didn't i was like I'm oh so my god proud. should i go back out and rip it back because <laughs> but then i was like no way am i ripping back mohair right yep I'm not even going to try. Hot tip though, I don't know if it works because I haven't tried it, but I've heard that if you put your mohair thing in the freezer and then um, rip it back, if you have to, it stops it from being quite so grippy. I'm just not game. No. <laughs> I, I love that you're freewheeling and that you're allowing something to go out into the world in a less than 
perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's going to be great, right? It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to amazing. work a little bit more on that, um, but it's really beautiful and just loving it. Mm, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. I also have in my hair to do that, but just haven't got there. Mm. Might, might, might have already started repurposing that purchase. For <laughs> That's alright because you can just get more, well, more or you can I yeah. don't know, get some. <laughs> you need burgundy. <laughs> I've got yes. some. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk some acquisitions. Oh yeah. Just a couple today, which is mm. restrained for us. Um, well, we're coming up to yeah. kind of yarn, peak yarn show season. Mm. Mm -hmm. So um, just a note, because you always hear me pulling things out mm. of plastic bags on this. Um, there is no single use happening here. These are all multiple, multiple uses. Yep. Um, I'm terrified of the idea of... Um, fabric moths yep. so all of my yarn is packed in plastic crates in individual ziploc bags so that if one particular skein has some eggs in it it will only destroy a small amount of yarn i'm not going to tell you how many plastic crates there are that's a story for another day <laughs> um, i bought this yarn in new zealand um when i was over there recently um a little while ago but i've forgotten to talk about it on this show so this is um zilana which is a new zealand brand um new zealand if you don't know is famous for having a heck of a lot of sheep um wool is a big industry in new zealand um zilana is a relatively big brand but considered a very high quality brand um this is zilana corey and it is a uh, merino brush tail possum and mulberry silk blend. So 60% fine New Zealand merino, 30% brush tail possum, and 10% mulberry silk. Um, um, I think it's probably important at this point to discuss the fact that possums are rampant in New Zealand. I think they were introduced. Yes. Yeah, I think they or, were introduced from Australia. Um, we have quite a few, quite a number of different types of possums as well. Um, brush tails are, I believe, big here. I'm not sure. Um, Many possum, of them live on my street. Brush tail possums in the in New Zealand are a pest, um, and they have, um, yeah. So that is that is where the possum comes from. I apologize if that is upsetting to you um so uh yeah so this color is blue awa um and you can't really see it's looking quite dark because it's a very cloudy day here um it's a really deep blue it's got quite a lovely luster in it from the from the mulberry silk um and i am planning to use this lovely um stuff to make a rock hound Best by um, Wool and Pine, which is a designer that I really, really love. Um, and you'll probably see a lot more of from me. <laughs> so. um, I have got some beautiful um, yarn. Um, it is from Rewa Fibers. And this yarn is quite special because my husband brought it back for me from his recent trip to the United States. Um, this, he wanted to find me something that we really couldn't, um, get over here, something that would be quite memorable. And this yarn is a hundred percent Tibetan, 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 Tibetan <laughs> yak down. Um, it is incredibly soft. Um, it is really lovely. Um, and the lining isn't too bad here it's, it's actually a little bit too. yeah so it's this gorgeous tealy bluey kind of color mm -hmm. um it's the color, hard to photograph it is very hard to photograph this color for some reason but the colorway is called mama's dress um i am not quite sure what to make with it if you have any ideas you could um, pop it in the comments. I think I've got. It's mm -hmm. a DK weight. So 
So I've got about over 800 yards. So I probably have about 800 meters, I think, of it. So maybe a vest project. It's a bit, um, might be a bit slinky for um, like a very structured vest, but we'll see. I'll find something beautiful. It's to lovely. It's just really lovely. Oh, loving it. All right. Well, well, time to talk pairings. Yeah. I think with whips, sometimes it can be hard because you might have a complicated whip where you don't necessarily want to have um, an alcoholic pairing. So we always, as you know, love a good tea pairing too. And because it's been, um, we're starting to get into the late autumn, early winter here in Melbourne. Um, so I wanted to talk about a little bit about a type of tea um, that I've been enjoying, which is turmeric. Um, yes, yes. My husband brought me back this from the United States as well. This is a um, turmeric ginger tea and a lot of, um, I know, right? <laughs> I know. Um, there's many, I think, different brands of turmeric ginger. It's a pretty common um a pretty common blend. Mm. I know that T2, if you've been, if you're a long time viewer of the podcast, you'll know that um, I love, I like T2, the brand. Um, they do a turmeric ginger ninja tea, which is delightful. Um, but you can also use turmeric tea as a, um, like a powdered tea. So like a chai latte, but it's a turmeric latte. Um, and sometimes I'll make those. And I've got this powder. I'm not sure if this company, I haven't seen them around, 99th Monkey. They do peanut butter as well. They do. <laughs> and different, very, Where different, are they from? various nut butters. They're local. They're, They're Australian. Australian. Yeah. You used to get that at the farmer's market. For that, you just um, mix it in a pot on the stove, really, mm. with some warm milk of your choice. Um, and so this is just a blend of turmeric, cinnamon, ginger, and pepper. So a nice, mm. spicy kind of turmeric latte. Mm -hmm. mm. I would add some honey to that as mm -hmm. well if I were um, brewing that. Yeah. And turmeric apparently is anti-inflammatory. Yes. Um, uh, different levels of evidence mm -hmm. based on that. Obviously but, um, not medical advice here. No, no, not, not in this circumstance. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a knitting show, not, <laughs> not a medical program. Um, but yes, um, apparently does have some anti-inflammatory benefits. Mm -hmm. um, certainly would have antioxidants and things that you would think based on the colour, color. usually vibrant colours. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Delicious and warming for cool mornings or afternoons. Um, Indeed. Perfect companion for your knitting. <laughs> well, I think that's that's us I for think today. that's us done. Quite a lot of whips. Ooh. A lot more for me than usual. Mm -hmm. Feeling a bit twitchy about that, but it'll be okay. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you want to follow the progress of our whips, you can check us out on Instagram at Perfect Pairings. Uh, we also would love you to comment on this video mm -hmm. if you liked it mm -hmm. um, or if you've got any questions or any ideas for us. Um, we would love you to give us a thumbs up because that helps with the YouTube algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, and if you... Um, if you get to the end of this episode, why don't you let us know what you're working on in the comments so um, we can see what whips are out there. We always love to learn about new patterns and new designers that we don't already know about. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy it um, so that you can be notified when there's new episodes out mm -hmm. and that helps us grow. Yep. And, and we want to share more of it with more people. So um, absolutely. Yeah. All right, lovely ones, have a beautiful day wherever you are, beautiful evening. Um, I hope to see you soon. <laughs> Happy knitting.